Hi guys, uh, good afternoon. Uh, am I uh, visible and audible to you all? Uh, my name is Zainab Bora and uh, I've done my MBBS and MD in radiology from Ames New Delhi and we are continuing with uh, the series of Radiology 101 wherein we are discussing the most important uh, topics uh, and uh, what we are going to discuss today is MRI sequences, particularly very important for INICT aspirants to attend as you have been seeing since the past two exams we've been uh, getting questions from MRI sequence and their identification, right? So pretty straightforward uh, topic once we understand it and we get the concept, I think you guys should be um, good to identify any given sequence that is asked. All right, so if audio visual is good, just give me a quick confirmation and I'll uh, begin uh, the class. Before that, I'll quickly tell you about plus subscription on an academy. Uh, download the app and uh, check out the special free classes which are going on through the day. If you find uh, that useful, you can get the unlimited subscription wherein various batch courses are there for live classes and you can combine it with prep ladder to get iconic subscription and there are these offers which are all going on uh, on those and these are the various batches which are ongoing i am currently having a batch course on uh, mnemonics which is basically all important high yield topics uh, from 8 to 10 pm every day so you can join that 8 o'clock today we'll be discussing hepatobiliary surgery and uh, trauma okay in that class uh, for the subscription you can use my code which is zvr or zvr live shall i post the pdf account after the class forgot just uh, drop a quick reminder on the group now and then i'll post before the class will be otherwise you keep forgetting uh, so i'll give it after the class all right so let's start uh, before we go to mri sequence identification we need to identify mri right so how do we start we start by looking at the bone so always look at the cortex so remember our thumb rule c for cortex c for ct so anytime cortex appears white as you can see this is the outermost part which is the bony cortex uh, if it appears white it is CT scan right it's a contrast enhanced CT you can also see the vessels which are enhancing on the other hand on an MRI image we'll see that this outermost layer that you're appreciating is the fat is the scalp layer okay annotated PDF is what you'll get so scalp fat is what is hyper intense and then within it can you see this black black thing that black black thing is the bone right so it's bone cortex and then you have the marrow so this is the first step of distinguishing CT versus MRI Yes, everybody feels confident that we'll be able to uh, get through this first step of saying whether it's a CT or it's MR. Yeah, because this was also asked, right? right? Last INI CT, you had a question uh, testing identification of CT also, wherein they give you an abdominal CT and then uh, they asked you one SWI also. So two questions from like this one basic easy concept. Yeah, so now once we've uh, done that, once we've identified MR, now we venture into the detail sequences yeah so we want to know t1 versus t2 which are the two most basic conventional sequences so here then we need to see the signal intensity of various things so first we'll tabulate this and then we'll see the images okay so first rule what is the first basic rule that all of you know that is world war two what is world war two that is water is white on t2 this is our basic basic fact that we remember so when we talk about fluid or csf or water or edema we know that it's going to be hyper intense white means hyper on mr we use the suffix intense so hyper intense white on t2 whereas it's going to be dark on t1 so this is my first basic principle world war ii what about muscle or any soft tissue for that matter? That is going to be a reference usually. Remember, we take soft tissue as the reference, muscle as the reference, and then we'll say that something is white compared to it, something is dark compared to it. So can I say everywhere that this is ISO intense? ISO intense means intermediate. This is what is our reference that we'll be comparing white and black with. Okay, so depending on the organ that we are reading the MRI for, we will have that. Okay, <laughs> I'll make my own stuff, but right now let's just do this MR sequence. So this is ISO intense. All right, apart from that, fat. What about fat? Fat is something which is white on both. So fat is hyper intense on T1, fat is hyper intense on T2. Okay, so that is about fat that remember will be white in both. So it doesn't really help us distinguish much. What about gray matter, white matter? Where do you think it should live up to its name? 
T1, one means good, right? So T1, it will live up to its name. Meaning what? That gray matter will appear grayer, will appear darker as compared to white matter. So just remember that it follows its name on a T1 weighted sequence, whereas it is opposite on a T2 weighted sequence. Okay, so this is about the basic differences that we've tabulated. Now let's see them in the form of images yeah so now look at these two images first thing outermost layer fat what do we notice guys what did we write that it is going to be hyper intense on both yeah so right now we don't know what is t1 what is t2 we see that fat is hyper intense on both yes everybody agrees so first thing done now let's look at fluid let look uh, let's look at the basic uh, difference which is going to be fluid which is going to be csf so when i see that csf is white here world war 2 i know that this is a t2 weighted sequence and this is a t1 weighted sequence let's compare let's compare with uh, gray matter white matter so what am i seeing here the outer cortex the outer gray matter is darker it's grayer compared to the inner white matter so it is living up to its name so this is indeed t1 weighted sequence on the other hand here what do i see that white matter is actually darker than the gray matter isn't it this is actually the central area is darker than the cortex so this is opposite yeah, everybody understood the basic uh, concept of T1 versus T2. Now, do we stop here? Is the world so simple? Not really. So what we have now done is we've made modifications on T2 weighted sequence. So what if I tell you that I want to pick up very subtle, subtle periventricular hyper intensities. So do you think it will merge with the central CSF and I might miss it? Answer is yes. So do you agree that what if I have a T2 weighted sequence only, but I make it a point that I can suppress CSF. I will exclusively CSF signal intensity. Uh, kill karungi. All right. So such that we are suppressing the CSF, but everything else is intrinsic to T2. So basically, can I write that this sequence, which is called flare, fluid attenuated inversion recovery, is a T2 weighted sequence in its essence, but we have suppressed the CSF signal intensity, not any other edema signal intensity, such that any other edema which is there will be picked up. Correct. So this is flare. What does it stand for? Fluid attenuated inversion recovery. As the name says, fluid has been attenuated. All right. So this is what you need to remember. So now see this. So that is why. What is our one basic rule? Ki CSF white hai, to T2 hai. But if CSF is black, I cannot jump to saying that it is T1 because it could be flare as well. Do you get the point? So how do I say it is T1? I always look at gray matter, white matter signal intensity. Whereas in flare, it is going to be like T2 wherein white matter is darker than the gray matter. Understood everyone? So this is how we have the three sequences. So from now two which is T1 and T2, we have added our family to flare. All right, so three, everybody is good so far, feeling confident. Ki teen sequence hum identify kar lenge. Yes, so now we want more modification with T2. Okay, so before that, see this. What is the use of flare? The use of flare is again to pick up these edema. So this is what a flare image appears like. That the CSF is black, but the edema will be standing out. The edema will appear white all right so this is what flare looks like this is very very useful in cases of multiple sclerosis yeah so multiple sclerosis is prone for periventricular demyelinating plaques so that is where flare is very useful plus in evaluation of subarachnoid hemorrhage all right so subarachnoid hemorrhage again uh, typically can be identified on ncct on an acute setting but a lot of times if the patients are coming with chronic subarachnoid hemorrhage ct will miss it so for chronic SH, we want to do MRI and for that flare is very, very useful. Okay, so this is about the utility of flare. Understood everyone? Right. Now let's do some more modifications with T2 only. Right. So 3 ka family ko we are making 4 now. So T2 weighted image. Now I am telling you I want to kill out fat. I want to see edema. I want to see edema as it is, but I want to suppress the fat. So what is this sequence called? T2 minus fat, it's called STIR. STIR stands for short tau inversion recovery. All physics terms not useful in the nomenclature. So why are we suppressing fat? Fat ne kya bigara? 
So this is very useful in orthopedics. Anytime I want to see bone marrow edema, anytime I want to see bone marrow edema, I need to kill out the fat because what is the most common constituent of bone marrow? It is fat. So fat we know is hyper intense. Edema we know is hyper intense. So if both are going to be white, how will I ever pick up bone marrow edema? Do you understand that this is how bone marrow edema appears? It is white. But if bone itself is white, I can't pick it up. So I can only pick this up if I kill this fat, if I suppress this fat. Is this concept making sense? So stir is a sequence wherein we suppress the bone marrow fat. Every fat we suppress such that the edema will stand out. Bone marrow edema can be seen in cases of stress fracture can be seen in cases of osteomyelitis, can be seen in cases of sacroiliitis. So the answer to all of these, when they ask you what is the best investigation, investigation of choice, are we all going to say MRI? Yes. If they ask you more difficult question with sequence, are we all going to say stir? We know why stir? Yes. So this is what is that. Okay, stochastic. Pehle ye padlo, sort of, and then stochastic. Okay, kuch kuch padde padde kuch kuch yada hai. So we'll study stochastic towards the end. Okay, so this is about stir sequence. Yes, everybody has understood this. So this is about the four sequences that we have learned: T1, T2, T2 minus CSF flare, T2 minus fat stir. Okay, right. This image pretty familiar. PTSD. Those of you who gave INICT, I think you guys know this image pretty well. What are we seeing here? So here there are these black black spots. So when you see these multifocal blooming, all right, this is called as blooming. When you see these black black dots, what is this? This is susceptibility weighted imaging. As the name suggests, susceptibility weighted imaging, it means that anything which destroys the magnetic field. What is the principle of MRI? It involves the usage of a very large high magnetic strength uh, magnet and we are basically seeing the signal derived from that. Now certain elements like iron, like calcium are going to distort that magnetic field such that normal tissue will not be able to produce any signal. So the loss of signal is called susceptibility and that is why it appears black. So anywhere I have these calcified tissue or I have iron. Where do we have iron? Do I have iron in my blood? Yes. So anytime there is bleeding, there are multifocal bleeds or there is calcification, the exact same appearance will be seen. Understanding everyone? So this is susceptibility weighted imaging. Okay. Wherein you will see these black black spots which represent either bleeding or calcification. Very very useful in the context of what? Very useful in the context of trauma wherein we want to see diffuse axonal injury. So again going back to our thumb rule wherein um, diffuse axonal injury is the only indication in trauma wherein MRI serves better than other things as far as head trauma is concerned. Okay. So this is SWI. Now coming to T positivities question. What about diffusion weighted imaging? So diffusion weighted imaging is also in its essence a T2 weighted sequence but you won't really see the ventricles as white in DWI all right so it's a it's a T2 in its essence but its essence is lost all right you can remember it that way without going into undue physics but how to identify so here the first image that you are seeing all right you are not able to see anything. Can you see the scalp? Can you see the bone? You can't see anything, right? So when you just see the brain, that is when you know it is diffusion weighted imaging. So that is your trick to identification. Yeah. And anything which shows diffusion restriction, I'll tell you what all things show diffusion restriction, but anything which does will appear white, will appear hyper intense on diffusion weighted imaging. Okay, so will you be able to now identify DWI versus flare? Flare was looking like a normal pretty sequence. Here everything else in the background is suppressed. Yeah, so this is diffusion weighted imaging. The cousin brother of DWI is this ABC, apparent diffusion coefficient. Okay, this is something that the machine only gives us. Okay, this is what machine gives us that uh, this is your counterpart. So counterpart one, it should be the exact opposite. The area which was white on DWI has to be dark on ADC for me to say that this is true diffusion restriction, that this is definitely diffusion restriction. Yeah. So now 
if you have understood till now then listen to the next 2 minutes otherwise close your ears and eyes basically what is true diffusion restriction why do we need the word true why are we not just stopping here so there is there must be something called a pseudo diffusion restriction or there must be something else which is mimicking diffusion restriction yeah so what happens is because intrinsically it's a t2 weighted sequence we are killing off the t2 weightedness but something which is very very t2 hyper intense like a cyst what if there is a cyst which is anyways very hyper intense because it is filled with fluid isn't it can that also appear hyper intense on dwi and i might say that oh this is diffusion restriction what is what if this is a tumor what if this is an abscess but in reality it is just a fluid containing lesion it is just a heavily t2 weighted substance isn't it so that might mimic diffusion restriction that is why i always want to confirm it with adc this cyst which is t2 hyper might not appear dark might not will not appear dark on adc so this is the use of confirming dwi plus adc for saying that something is diffusion restriction and when such a phenomenon happens we call it t2 shine through okay t2 shine through means that it is just a t2 hyper intense lesion it's just a cyst which is shining through it is not a diffusion restricting thing okay if you understood this very good if you didn't understand this kuch bhi nahi jayega all right it is completely all right so ajay apparent diffusion coefficient is the full form like dr alter ego has said now what are substances will show us diffusion restriction so first is stroke where we have diffusion restriction which is most most useful isn't it stroke most sensitive sequence earliest identification of an ischemic stroke will be on the basis of diffusion restriction it will start showing restriction within 30 minutes of onset of stroke okay so ischemic stroke what else will show diffusion restriction tumors tumors will show diffusion restriction did you understand it's okay even if you didn't understand shine through ka concept um diffusion ka concept samajh lo ki what will show diffusion restriction so let's just say this is our box filled with cells and water is diffusing yeah water is diffusing randomly which is called brownian motion now any time you have stroke what happens these cells are going to swell up isn't it they swell up because of cytotoxic edema because the atp pump is not working so will our water be able to diffuse as freely no so diffusion restriction in tumors the number of cells increases so again will our water be able to diffuse not really so again diffusion restriction what else what if the entire tissue is filled with very thick thick pus so will abscesses show diffusion restriction yes what if it is filled with thick thick keratinaceous material so will epidermoid cyst show restriction yes so that answers your question uh, that one of you asked how to distinguish epidermoid from arachnoid cyst epidermoid cyst will show diffusion restriction arachnoid cyst will not show diffusion restriction this concept this list is very very important for all of you to remember okay right so this is about dwi what about this colorful colorful image anybody can guess what this is but this colorful image is craniopharyngioma mohini yes it can also show diffusion restriction because it's very thick in proteinaceous contents yeah so that can also show diffusion restriction this is diffusion tensor imaging so diffusion tensor imaging which is very useful for evaluating white matter tracts yeah so any time i want to see white matter tracts i can use this dti which will be color coded all right so you see these three colors green red and blue which are color coded depending on the direction of the white matter tracts like you are seeing these longitudinal fascicles which are going anterior to posterior so they are coded green if it goes from right to left like corpus callosum it will be red and if it goes down craniocordial it will be blue all right so these are the various colors you don't need to remember that but they are color coded according to direction yeah so this is diffusion tensor just for an extra edge what is the concept remember it is based on fractional and isotropy so do you know isotropy something that uh, yeah something that you can associate with your lives right now lot of chaos isotropy means chaos 
uh, which is there in all directions randomly there is no directional directionality to your life right now isn't it everything is half hazard ki kab result aayega kya hoga kya seat milega kya cut off right so you are in isotropic start state right now but what if somebody has decided i am going to study for inict irrespective of what my result comes or whatever i will see when result comes but i will study for inict does that person have some sort of direction in his life yes then you are beautiful like dti if you have that direction in your life that means that you have some direction jaise hamare axons ke paas hai jaise hamare white matter ke paas hai that they have some direction unlike gray matter which is chaos all around this knows i have to go right to left i have to go anterior to posterior so machine mri machine picks up on that fact that who has direction i will give it color okay did you understand so what if universe is watching right now and saying i will give rank to people who have direction so do you need to start studying now yes yes so that is our learning point so diffusion tensor so be like Like white matter, not like grey matter. Okay, that is our learning point. Now, what if I create this beautiful 3D image out of it? 3D. कि खाली white matter दिखाना है, brain भी हटा दो. That is called as tractography. All right. So just a translation of this. This is tractography. Okay. Understood. So DTI tractography. Going ahead to these two images. So again, these are extensions of T2. These are like heavily T2 weighted. images heavily t2 weighted such that i'll kill out everything else which is not fluid i only want fluid in my life so heavily t2 weighted image no need to put any contrast kuch nahi karna bas heavy t2 weighted dena hai so anything which is fluid will shine out so what is shining out here the biliary radicals the cbd the main pancreatic duct and what is that mrcp magnetic resonance cholangio pancreaticography मीन्स एम आर से देख रहे हैं कोलैंजियो माने सी बी डी पैंक्रियाटिकोग्राफी माने पैंक्रियाटिक डक्ट सो दिस इज एम आर सी पी डजेंट इन्वॉल्व एनी कॉन्ट्रास्ट इज जस्ट अवीली टीटोवेटेड एम आर सिमिलरली माई इफ आई वॉन्ट सी द किडनीज द यूरेटर द ब्लैडर अगैन इट्स फिल्ड विथ यूरिन अगैन इट्स फिल्ड विथ वॉटर सो हेवीली टीटोवेटेड इफ आई वॉन्ट सी दिस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज एम आर यूरोग्राफी ओके सो दीज आर जस्ट हेवीली टीटोवेटेड सीक्वेंस नो कॉन्ट्रास्ट ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट दैट what is this when you don't see any image we see this graph of uh, uh, metabolites which is plotted this is mr spectroscopy this is useful in the brain and prostate see a prostate may use karte hain brain may use karte hain to see the intracellular biochemical accumulates so the, in the brain we have three main metabolites one is n aspartate acyclase naa no need to remember the full form but na marks what it marks the neuronal integrity if neurons are getting destroyed any brain pathology tumor hai inflammation hai kuch bhi hai na will go down do you agree so any pathology na goes down except one pathology where na increases where the enzyme is missing n aspartate acyclase which is that disease can advance all right so that is can advance thank you so much dr sujata for your very kind words so can advance disease you can remember naa increases yeah everywhere else na is going to go down but about choline choline is a marker of cellularity yeah so any time you have a tumor can i say choline will increase everywhere else choline will go down creat is the internal reference so we'll see na is basically reduced or choline is increased depending on the creat so this serves as the internal reference okay so this is how a normal mr spectroscopy looks right what about this so let's see we have a lesion in the brain and we've done an mr spectro so now you guys will interpret this for me so this is our reference isn't it what happened to na na was supposed to be very high with respect to creat it has gone down means it is not canavan it is some pathology which is destroying right it's a destructive lesion neurons are getting destroyed what happened to choline it was supposed to be lower than creat and now look where it has overshot that means what cellularity is increase so now give me your interpretation of this mr spectro perfect this is a brain tumor can i interpret this safely as a primary brain tumor yes you can because you are seeing neurons are getting destroyed and there is increase cellularity isn't it so this is what we will call perfectly as glioma okay so this is about mr spectroscopy what is this functional imaging technique i asked the patient to speak 
and I see that blood flow increases in this particular area. This is your functional MR. So when you see functional um, usage of the brain, this is functional MRI. It relies on the concept of bold. So bold can be tested. So which is blood oxygen level dependent. So this is blood oxygen level dependent. Whichever area is being used right now, that will have more deoxyhemoglobin than oxyhemoglobin, isn't it? The oxygen is getting used up by the neurons. So that is why we rely on that fact that whatever is the active area of the brain will have less oxyhemoglobin and we pick that up. Okay. So that is bold MR. Okay. So for various things, for various psychiatric conditions, dementia, for awake neurosurgery to prevent those eloquent areas, all of these are the applications of functional MRI. Okay. What about this final image wherein we are seeing vessels? We are seeing arteries in this case, we are seeing veins in this case. So this is MR angiography, this is MR venography. Yeah, so this is basically something where you need to remember one phrase that MRI basically can yes active contains more deoxyhemoglobin isn't it because the oxygen is getting sucked out by the neuron so the active area will have more deoxyhemoglobin cartica and that is what is utilized in the concept okay so both of these remember in CT ever if I want to see CT angiography do you agree I have to have to give iodinated contrast otherwise I can't see the vessels isn't it but that is not true for MR the biggest advantage of MR is that angio and venography can also be done without contrast. And the sequence, the name that you need to remember is TOF, which is time of flight angiography or venography. There is one more thing if you already knew this, PC, which is called phase contrast. So there are two kinds of angio and venography which can be done in a non-contrast manner. So time of flight and phase contrast. Okay. Finally, thoda sa extra edge, anytime you want to see CSF flow. So for various conditions like uh, Chiari 1 malformation where there is crowding of the posterior fossa or in conditions uh, like normal pressure hydrocephalus, again where the uh, CSF flow needs to be studied through the fourth ventricle, we will do this kind of a CSF flow study. So when you see sab kuch aisa hazy hazy hai and you are just seeing uh, some white white patches, this is CSF flow study. Just thoda sa naam patana chahiye. Very difficult question if you ask you. Okay. So this was it that I had planned for you. Now one question was there on. There were two uh, odd questions. One was I think about pneumoperitoneum and lateral radiograph. So lateral is other lateral decubitus is uh, useful for pneumoperitoneum. And what else? Urology. Uh, urology bachana. I will have one more class on urology. I didn't want to mix it up with this. But we will have one dedicated special class only. I mean dedicated YouTube class only. I will take one more on urology and gynae investigations also I will add. Now, so Euro plus gynae will do one special uh, investigation of choice. Now, the other question that I am forgetting. That person is also left I guess. Anyways. Fine. So if you are here you can ask any other doubts that you have. This is about the MR sequences guys. Ha, stochastic. Correct. But that person is left and Shayantan and Mohini remember. So I will still tell you. So stochastic versus. Yeah, thank God I kept these annotations. Right. So stochastic versus deterministic. So just remember the name. If you go on remembering stochastic no you will forget it. So just remember, deterministic matlab can be determined. It has a threshold. Stochastic is something which has no threshold. The other thing that will help you remember is uh, example. So stochastic ka example kya hai? It is cancer. Once you remember cancer is its example, you will not forget what stochastic means. It means there is no threshold. Ki maine 10 CT karaya, I will get cancer. No. Then the other thing. Is it immediate side effect? Is it delayed side effect? Cancer ko ya SS hona hai? bomb blast hua, achanak se next day you have cancer. No, it, it can't happen after nuclear accidents immediately also, right? So it is always a delayed side effect, whereas deterministic is immediate. Yeah, it is immediate after that threshold is crossed. What is the example of deterministic? Anything like alopecia, erythema, redness is all uh, deterministic, right? What about the severity? Alright, so if I tell you that I am increasing the dose, increasing the dose in both the cases, what will happen in stochastic? Can I say that fine, as you go on increasing the dosage of exposure, the probability increases. Yeah, so the probability here increases in a linear fashion. 
that as you keep increasing dose the probability of having cancer increases but i am saying there is no threshold here what will you say anyways but ho to rahi tha once the threshold is crossed so what will increase as you keep increasing the dose can you say that the severity will keep increasing that more the dose more severe the alopecia more severe the erythema yeah so that is what is the difference between stochastic and deterministic other examples of deterministic as you have all written correctly uh, would be cataract would be sterility right so infertility all of these are deterministic they have a threshold beyond which they will happen but cancer mutations they are by chance stochastic literally means a matter of chance okay what's neurography so just like uh, we do a uh, dti in the brain in the peripheral nerves also ajay we can image the various nerves all right so we can see the entire nerve in its tract to see if there is any pathology you know like neuritis it gets bulkier so the imaging of the peripheral nerves is called neurography okay gradient echo yeah so good question so basically uh, when we uh, give rise to mri all right so any time we have mr there are two basic uh, sequences two methods of uh, getting the sequences no that's not colorful neurography is not colorful it's black and white only yeah so when we generate the mr sequence we have a spin echo and a gradient echo these are the umbrella branches all right so these are the umbrella sequences that we have while we are getting the mri sequences right very complex physics that i don't want to go into but susceptibility weighted imaging again belongs under the umbrella term of gradient echo only right so gradient is again something that is testing the susceptibility that is testing uh, all of these things which are uh, distorting the magnetic field right so this is one part swi is one part of gradient echo and when you look at the two images they look pretty similar yeah so it's almost impossible to distinguish them based on the image that is why when you got both the options in your question a finicity is pretty shocking yeah but they were uh, probably asking the more obvious one which is swi but gradient echo is something that can be t1 gradient echo t2 gradient echo and that is frequently written as star t2 star aise karke whereas this when we say general t2 general t1 it is a normal spin echo right so any time you are taking t1 star t2 star that is gradient echo so these are um, basic uh, you know generational uh, differences okay matlab uh, not important for your level all the sequences that we discussed today i think are important for your level if you can manage them i think you should be good to go for entrances okay guys so thank you so much that was it for today uh, i hope it was useful i'll see you all um tomorrow 4 o'clock tonight 11:30 must know images will be on bronchiectasis it will be a um, recorded session all right that i'll upload okay thank you guys i hope this is useful and bye and take care